right. Good morning. So, transitions and being awake uh, two themes that uh, were discussed ahead of the recording. Let's delve into those and start with the breath uh, to wake up a little bit. Uh, so breathe in very, very deeply in through the nose and out through the mouth. And don't do anything more than breathe, but notice what the body does. Notice how the posture changed a little bit. Notice how uh, there is a lift. And then perhaps if you're feeling um, even more leth lethargic uh, this morning, maybe involve a little bit of your hands. And so with the inhale, bring the hands up over the head. And on the exhale, bring the hands down towards the center. Inhale, bring the hands out around the body and up and then exhaling down. And just sort of keep doing that, following um, the motion of the hands and in and out, up and down. Feel your awareness sort of rise and fall a little bit more dramatically than normal. Allow the opening of the arms to open the chest cavity to give more space for the air to come in. And continue on as long as you feel uh, energized um, and um, refreshed by the motion, by the uh, deep breaths that can invigorate the body with increased oxygen flow, with sort of a opening up the body, the muscles, the joints. And then to settle back down, let's come into that full body breathing uh, exercise we've done every once in a while where we breathe in not only through the, the nose and mouth, but in through the palms of the hands, the soles of the feet and the crown of the head. So breathing inward from the extremities into the heart and then exhaling out through the palms, the soles of the feet the crown of the head, and of course, through the mouth or the nose. Filling the body with energy, filling it with breath, filling it with intention, with awareness, with consciousness. Fill it with possibility with potential. Fill it with readiness, with alertness, with a certain fearlessness and courage. And bring your body and your mind together, reintroduce them for a little bit and let the mind pay attention to what the body needs. You 
noticing any tension in the body, any posture changes that need to be made, any wiggles or shakes or any other movement or uh, awareness that needs to be provided. Let the body be bristling with morning energy. My uh, my dog has a ritual every time that he gets up from his nap so that he can move over to another part of the house and take another nap. Um, but uh, he does, you know, the yoga that we're all familiar with, the, the downward dog and the upward dog sort of stretches out his front paws and his back. And then he wriggles his spine, twists and shakes his ears. Let's do our own sort of internal version of uh, the downward dog and the upward dog and the sort of spinal twist. Then allow that bristling morning energy that's uh, sort of coursing through your body, allow it to radiate outwards uh, in the form of energy, in the form of emotion, warmth, um, sort of uh, vigor, um, brightness, light however you sort of naturally come to emote this energy. This experience of fearlessness, of courage, of awareness, of vim and vigor. as you're sort of basking in this, this sense of possibility of, of I can do 
most anything. Um, let's reflect on the times that the new meanings that come with each of the transitions um, that we make in life and the balance of uh, worry and fear with this, this um, feeling of courage and feel, uh, fearlessness. Um, transitions, change is always with us. Uh, but some days it's easier and some days it's harder. In many ways, uh, change happens um, and we flow with it, but in other times change happens and we be can become deeply resistant to it. Neither is better than the other. Going with the flow uh, is not always the right thing to do. Um, you know, you picture the image of lemmings jumping off a cliff is a good example of going with the flow uh, and perhaps not so wise. Um, and it's also true that resisting change um, uh, can be downright impossible, if not counterproductive, in that many people resist uh, change that is needed because it impacts their privilege, it impacts their worldview in a way that um, is uh, demeaning or um, stripping them of, them of their power. And so neither of these extremes uh, are useful in working with change, working with how we work with change. The Buddha um, spoke a little bit in his lifetime about the concept of the middle way um, Madhyamaka. But it wasn't until much later um, when an, uh, a later Indian philosopher, Nagarjuna, um, sort of uh, worked out this path of the middle way. Uh, it is the the finding of the balance between two extremes. And so when we look at the, the original Buddhist teaching, the Four Noble Truths, it tells us that our the suffering of the type that we can do something about the suffering that we bring upon ourselves uh, by um, setting expectations or hoping for uh, hoping for happiness uh, by repeating things that don't bring us happiness over and over again. When we look at uh, sort of the natural evolution of that teaching, 
to Nagarjuna's uh, teaching of the middle way, it is simply the very, very useful idea on how to look for happiness uh, in how we operate in the world. I'll pause there and let's repeat that breathing that we did in the beginning. Deeply inhale in through the nose. Exhale through the mouth. If you'd like, you can repeat the raising of the hands. The inhale, hands down to the center on the exhale. Or just the full body breathing through the mouth and nose, palms, soles of the feet and the crown of the head. And do our either physical or mental downward dog and upward dog and our little spinal twists like my little dog waffles. And again, feel that bristling energy coursing throughout your entire body and feeling it radiating outwards as warmth or gratitude or vigor or fearlessness. or the intention to go about your day a little bit wiser than yesterday with optimism. So in our meditation, uh, striking this balance, this middle way, I've been speaking about positive energy, fearlessness, and you know, optimism, courage. And of course, if we go throughout our if we sort of go through our body and we inventory our emotions and our thoughts, um, our lives, our experience isn't just made up of optimism and fearlessness and courage, uh, but it has um, a balance between their opposites. There are days when we live in some fear. There are days when we are pessimistic. There are days when we are exhausted. And this is the way of uh, life. This is the way of the universe. Um, 
we don't get to have blueberry muffins for breakfast every day um, and remain healthy. Um, we have to have, you know, some fiber in the morning, you know, or, you know, have some vitamins or, you know, some of the less fun things, less bright things. We have mourning and grief and we have the pandemics and disease and people around us suffering as well. Um, how does one operate in a world um, that uh, has both a bright and a dark side to it? The philosopher Nagarjuna um, talks about the middle way in two contexts. One in how we can live our life, but also um, in the context of exactly who we are and how we embrace the fullness of who we are. Uh, and meditation uh, offers us the insight of us looking and learning about the nuances of ourselves, our bright side, our dark side, our, um, our better nature and our not so good nature. All of these things make up a whole of who we are. And if we were to um, deny or repress any part of us, the darkness or the light, we become less of a person. We become less ourselves and we become less whole. And as a function of this, we become uneasy and separated from the world. This is the idea of uh, dis-ease, um, not necessarily a virus or a bacteria, but the loss of our connection to the world around us, which alienates us. creates um, dis a disjointedness about our life. Nice deep inhale in. And a big exhale out. And if we look at Living in the world of uh, coronavirus, how do we take in the wholeness of it um, and live with ease uh, and without being alienated from our connection to the world? As I mentioned earlier, I have no good advice um, for parenting or for uh, dealing with, you know, the specifics of the coronavirus. I'm not a doctor, nor do I play one on TV. However, if we look at the 
transitions in life. We see our loved ones moving on into different parts of their life. And we see them moving out into a world of danger, uh, but also in a world of great joy and, and uh, potential. Know that those dangers are always there. And that potential is always there. And that if we were to give anybody any advice about life, it would be to embrace it wholly as they should embrace themselves wholly and be awake and aware, awake uh, or in the Pali Bodhi or Buddha, the awakened one, be awake to both the dangers and the beauty in the world around us and within ourselves. If we are awake to the wholeness of experience, we are simultaneously aware of the dangers and also the joy that can be found in connecting with the people around us and the world that we live in. So take into your day a sense of wholeness and a sense careful optimism of joyful um, appreciation of the difficulties of others and of your own difficulties. And Take in the energy that's needed from the world around you, but being careful to notice what energy is good for you and what energy is bad for you. If you can live this way uh, and be an example to those around you, this is how we spread enlightenment. This is how we can help others this is how um, we can live joyfully in the time of great danger and great potential. As they say, may you live in interesting times. And one last time, let's do a series of nice, deep, full body inhales and exhales. And do your inward, downward dog and upward dog and spinal twist. Feel the awareness, the blood, the energy flowing through the, fully out into the extremities and back in towards the heart center. And over the next few breaths, we'll slowly come out of our meditation.
Allow the next inhale to be a little bit deeper. And on the exhale, bring some movement to the fingers and the toes and the spine. And on the next inhale, bring the breath in a little bit deeper. And on the exhale, slowly open the eyes. May all living beings have happiness and its causes. May all be free from unhappiness and its causes. May all dwell in equanimity, free from attraction or aversion. And may all quickly find the great happiness which lies beyond all misery. May all enjoy inner and outer peace now and forever. Namo Amitofo. Have a wonderful day.